Hi, I'm Johannes Riegler. I work with the management board of the Driving Urban Transition Partnerships. And in this episode, you will hear about regenerative urbanism and the links to pu urban public spaces, as well as about our work as a research innovation funding um, program. Enjoy listening. Thank you so much for listening to Urbanistica podcast. I am Mustafa Sharif, an urban planner, and you're more than welcome to join my big journey of exploring the making of smarter and more livable cities. Please don't forget to follow Urbanistica on the different social media platforms. And also let's connect on LinkedIn. Big thanks to Urbanistica podcast partner, Afri. Afri is an international engineering and design company providing sustainable solutions in the fields of energy, industry and infrastructure. Are you ready for a new episode? Let's go for it. Today we have a new story from Pontevedra. I have the pleasure to welcome you, Johannes, to Urbanistica Podcast. Hey, and welcome. Hi, nice to meet you. How are you doing? Very good. It was a couple of very intensive days here in <laughs> Pontevedra uh, with a dense program, a lot of input, a lot of uh, knowledge sharing, yeah. experience sharing. Um, yeah. It was very nice. It was a very nice city to be in or to, to have the place making week in this beautiful city and old town here so it's it's really a good experience yeah and i see your your notebook is full of uh notes so yeah <laughs> you were really listening carefully <laughs> as much as i, as I could yes uh, yeah uh, awesome yeah. so what what is the most interesting program activity yeah so for me just to to give it a bit of a framing maybe yeah. so um i'm an urbanist and a geographer i work for um the Driving Urban Transition Partnership, which is a research and innovation funding program, which brings or, or run by member states. So it's seven, uh, 27 countries um, are running this um, together with the European Commission. So we fund research and innovation projects. And um, yeah, the placemaking community was always one very, very close to us. Also, we funded a couple of projects on that. And uh, it was a very good opportunity to come here and to reflect upon our new priorities with this community. Mm. So we had a session yesterday on regenerative urbanism or regenerative public spaces. So how would radically regenerative public spaces look like in 2050, mm. which was very, very interesting and very stimulating. Yeah, yeah. So you're here like to get to inspire and get inspiration. Exactly. So it is um, inspiration, but we also very strategically use that as, as input than for the our future. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So what is like, uh, what is it, the future looks like? Is there any like main themes? Is it like more toward community engagement? I mean, we, we, we have three priority themes, if yeah. you will. Yeah. That is the, the 15 minute cities. I think we heard a lot of the, about that. Yeah. Um, positive energy districts mm. and uh, circular urban economies, which links uh, also to, to nature-based solutions. Mm. So in all of these three priority topics, um, there's a strong element of public space and, and placemaking involved in there. Um, if you if you if you make it visible, so it's, yeah. it's um, so yeah, it's it's very interesting to to be here and yeah. to have this. Discussion. So so back to the question, which uh, program activity was your favorite one? I have to say the session we organized yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for that, but but it was just so good. We 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 you know the, the pe we gave the people was it a panel or no no it was a workshop okay so uh, they were um, we gave them city profiles and I had to think about radically regenerative public spaces in 2050 mm -hmm. by taking into account all these new climate realities, mm -hmm. um, all these crises we are facing. Yeah. And it just brought together so many different disciplines and so much different knowledge yeah. on um, which people exchanged in this in this session. Mm -hmm. um, and they they drew and and did, it was mainly a DIY workshop, if you would. And they, we had some very very nice and inspiring outcomes. How you can transform spaces towards with nature mm. um, towards this yeah a regenerative thinking. 
do you do you see that people are let's say placemakers are aware of what's happening the challenges like when that is a very good climate and um that is a very good question. I, Let's say based on yesterday's uh, workshop, the people attended your workshop. What is the level? Did you see? Okay, I think I think people who attended the session were very aware of that, yeah. and they also were very aware of how um, that you might have to think more more towards or include these climate realities more into placemaking. I mean, it, it anyway happens. But one of the takeaways I I have from from this uh, conference in general is that i mean placemaking is if you will hyper local right um i know we discuss it's always it's often the discussion on 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 the street which connects to that the square around it yeah. which which totally makes sense but i think you you need to see placemaking really as a tool to achieve bigger ambitions and and strategies connected to climate um, adaptation yeah. and mitigation. Mm. So I think this this awareness could be strength, strengthened even more because it's it's such a powerful tool. Exactly. Um, that this this hyper local yeah, yeah. initiatives the, connect to that. Exactly. Like the, the thing here is that as a placemakers, I think we should really be aware of the mission of placemaking. So it's not only a, 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 a how to say a little uh, participatory method that you use to 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 how to say to work on a place and so on. No, it's like it, the contribution is, is super big to a super big mission. So we Absolutely. should look at it from like that angle yes. as well. Absolutely, I yeah. totally agreed. Yeah, and 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 when you say regenerative public space, what what do you mean by it? That's that? a, that's also something we tried to find out yesterday. How would it look like? What mm. would it would there be urban agriculture? Would there be nature based solutions? Would there be? Um, we tried to find out. Mm. So we had. Um, People develop their their uh, regenerative public spaces. I don't have an answer to that because we don't mm. really know. Mm. You know, because regenerative principles or regenerative thinking goes way beyond sustainability, if you will. Mm. So it is a it is an interesting field where we need to to put all our brains together to mm. think about that. How could that look like? Yeah. And what, what role does placemaking um, play in that? Yeah. Did you see any like clear patterns of what? Um the participants did yesterday um like some some main elements the main elements were um all the groups discussed um the need for experimentation co-creation bringing people together um while having a clear vision to where you want to go yeah, right? yeah. and um we also had done a briefer session on or we looked at how do you make that actually happen what mm. steps do you need in like the action plan it, a bit, little bit like sketching an action yeah. plan, um, and you know it's it's very complex. It's a lot of actors. It's a lot of different questions from funding to regulations to um, what have you. Um, but still, it's we can break it down. This this mm. vision we 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 developed yesterday, we can break it down and see what steps might be needed, exactly. what capacities and knowledges. Mm. Are not there yet but we have to develop that to get there yeah and and back to your work because you told me like um, in the organization you fund the project related to different themes um, do you see many like ap application f with the from placemakers or are, are we good in sending application <laughs> um there are um applications also funded projects on um with the with the Placemaking community and people who were also yeah. here in, in Ponte Vedra. Yeah, just to give you a highlight, I work yeah. with the same, but when in on a Swedish level, like a national ah. level. So also like with an organization giving funding to like um, architects working yeah. more like testing or trying stuff. Okay. So it's interesting. Now yeah. I will. I love to hear from you. What what organization is that? It's called Arcus. Okay. Arcus uh, Foundation. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> we give like fund also to projects, but it's not like this mega big funding. Yeah. It's like I think. To like one hundred thousand euro, mm -hmm. like the maximum. Yeah, yeah. In Sweden, just, we we work together with uh, Formas and Vinova. Formas, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're like um, how to say the largest yeah. funding yeah. Uh, yeah. organizations. Or yeah, yeah. So so back. Uh, do you see uh, applications from specifically placemaking community? They are involved in in with a, or they build consortia with other other organizations. Um, so we see that. Um, I think it's very encouraging. It's 
also at times I think difficult to um, for placemakers or for non-research innovation actors to mm. participate in this kind of European yeah. research innovation funding um, world or or in this. So there is a bit of a difference and um, or, or differences. But yeah, we receive application for that, and I'm very happy for that. Do you do you target um, people like practitioners or people from academia? All of that. So of them, we yeah. the aim is to bring together really research and uh, innovation actors, organizations, universities, local public administrations, NGOs, civil society organizations. Yeah, um, bring them together in a in a project really to. Mm. Yeah, to co-create and build something together and experiment, ideally. So we support a lot of experimentation and co-creation, urban living labs. So over yeah. the last years, we funded over 200 urban living labs. 200? Europe and the world, actually. Yeah. Wow. And uh, yeah, it will, we will continue with that. Of it's course. a very important part of this program, this experimentation. So not mm. having, having the flexibility in the projects to co-create, Mm. test learn mm. have feedback loops in there so it's it's, inter it's interesting what you say because usually when people put money organization put money even if it's funding they put like they are expecting an, a result so now you're telling me you know it's important like to experiment to test to try like maybe it's not sure that we're going to get the result that we are thinking to get how is it like uh, how can you be so calm about this process <laughs> i mean it it, it requires a lot of work on all ends. So on the funded projects, to, you know, to break out of, of silos, to break out of, of their um, maybe traditional thinking of how you research or how do you build up knowledge. It requires changes on the on the funding schemes and funding side as well, because you you know you cannot you cannot especially with urban studies or with urban related topics. This linear model just doesn't work. You cannot go from A to B. You need this experiments and see where it leads you and, and bring different streams together then in the end. Yeah. Um, so I think there's no way around that, but it's, uh, it's a process which requires a lot of actors, a lot of uh, energy and work also to, mm -hmm. to break silos and to provide schemes which allow that. Yeah. Um, can you share with us some like a funded project and like how uh, what is the idea and what is the result? Mm -hmm. um, I'll pick one project which I believe already ended. Mm -hmm. um, it was called Play City. Um, it was um, with yeah, the placemaking or people from the placemaking community mm -hmm. were part of that, and uh, many of them were also here. So it um, they had a look in or they worked in in Vienna and Oslo. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, to develop develop place making for certain areas with the city. Also in Vienna, they work together with the city in a in a in a um, neighborhood or district across the Danube, so a bit outside of the city center, if you will. Very, and in Oslo, they had they worked with a school to where they co created um, co created um, a scheme or a, a plan for how to develop um, the places around the school. Mm -hmm. That is one one project which brought together very different actors as well. Yeah. Do you, do you require that the the team of the project is is mixed or no? It's it's fine if there's only one one like one organization. Well, it you need to have at least three organizations from three different, different, different sectors. countries. Okay. Countries. Countries. Okay, that's big. And um, but usually there's way more partners involved in this yeah, projects yeah. from and they bring together very different mm. disciplines. Yeah. And what is the maximum um, amount of money? Well, I I don't think we have a maximum amount of money. I mean, it depends on the project. It has to make sense for the project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, whatever whatever the the, the project yeah. um, think they the need for they need, implementing yeah. the mm. projects they apply to. That's interesting because also like uh, in, the, in the foundation that I work with, we usually get receive application, but uh, unfortunately they are not how to say not not I don't know how to frame it like not good not enough to be judge or to 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 for the our jury to go through. Maybe sometimes they miss something. Maybe sometimes they miss the the calculation or the a the mission. So from when you when you receive application. What are like the mistakes that that people 
do. So maybe we can like inspire so yeah. we can avoid them for the future. I have to say I I'm I'm not in the um I'm not dealing with the with the results of the calls, with the funding, with okay. the, with this some more on the on the strategic level and topics. Yeah. Um but one thing I can say, which also links to the placemaking community mm-hmm. in some parts, what we saw is, and I mentioned it before, there is uh, a lack of capacity in terms of time, knowledge, how to um, apply to research and innovation projects because the game, or the game, if you will, yeah. is significantly different. The working mode is significantly different than what usually potentially placemakers are used to. Yeah. And um, since there is the requirement for excellency in by um, applying to that, there is a certain gap there, which we mm-hmm. also identified. And we need also as a funding program, we need to address yeah. that in, at some point because we we want to have these mm. actors involved mm. and these projects and the knowledges which are there are just there. These are great. This yeah. is great stuff. Yeah. But how to get it into a funding mm. project is not. That trivial. So we are working on something like that, bridging that at yeah. the moment. So you mean like know. make the um, application process a bit s- more simple um, or less requirements? No, or it was more like um, we're working on something um, which would allow um, communities um, to build the capacities to then apply for this project. It mm. would be like a, um, some um, another funding scheme. For okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So, like, but that is not we, we, like official. Yeah, it's not official. We yeah, are just in the development phase. Yeah, at the moment. But this is something what we what we work. Yeah, on. for 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 us, we are think we also like uh, what we see is like there is usually the same, like same organization applying every year because like it's a kind of they know how to they know the game so they know how to write an application so you, we usually receive from them. All the time, but then it's like a question. Okay, where is everybody else? Is it our mistake? Is it something wrong with our application process? Or no, people are not interested. So we're trying, like, also to make the application a bit simple, mm-hmm. but also like raise awareness that like working with this kind of uh, funding project is the same as a, a project you get from a client. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't look at it like two different ways. Yeah. How, how, what do you think? What is your reflection? Um. Well, yeah, I have to say we, yeah, my reflection to that. I think it is important to have this low threshold somehow to, to get in. We we also, since we, I mean, f- research innovation funding is at the core of what we're doing, but we are doing other things as well, which yeah. we see as, as relevant to build up this knowledge and knowledges mm. for urban transformation. That is building communities um, around topics, having exchanges with people who are in the projects, people who are not in the projects, so yeah. build this this kind of fora. Mm. Um, I think this is extremely important also for, for a funding program to not only, you know, put out 15 projects, 20 projects per year or even more, mm. and then projects run off work on on their on their things and and i I come back with reports or so but there's so much you could do or you can do by linking the project linking the people in the project experiences to a wider community um yeah yeah i think because like it's it's also not only about the project time but after the project when the organization are connected Mm -hmm. i think this is also part of the, the aim of why you require different teams as well. Yes, absolutely. So like more collaboration. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And 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 recently we talk a lot about mission driven. Mm-hmm. How how is it uh, like on in your case in the tra- strategical level? Like what is what is the mission? Well, the mission is at the moment very much climate neutrality, mm. um, livability. Yeah. Um, that is just that is just that topic, um, which comes with a lot of other layers, you know, you, you need to see, but this is really the, the mission, if you will, the challenge yeah. we want to address until, yeah, now in the next seven years and then hopefully beyond, but in the next seven years that this, the this project runs for seven, uh, the program for mm-hmm. now runs for seven years. Mm-hmm. And I think there, yeah, if Europe is really, takes it serious to, to become climate neutral um, in a couple of decades and some cities by 2030 even, um, then we need this. Exactly. This yeah, yeah. How, how would you decide about like about a mission? Like, can you just give us a highlight? Like, 
Um, I mean, we, we had this mission, what we worked with, this mission towards climate neutrality, sustainability. Yeah, yeah. And then we had, a, I think it was two or three years, a process, mm -hmm. a participatory, participatory process with, I, I don't know, hundreds of stakeholders wow. and workshops, and then again, consultations and so on, mm -hmm. where we actually identified the needs which are there in local public administration, in other communities, to mm -hmm. build the capacities for urban transformation. Yeah. And out of that came these three priorities I mentioned, 50-minute mm. city, uh, positive energy districts, and circular economies. Yeah. So these are basically our pathways mm. through which we want to achieve or su support, support achieving exactly. this, this goal. Mm. Interesting. So we are in Pontevedra now and uh, attending the Placemaking uh, Europe Week. Our community is listening to you now. So I have two questions to start with. What should placemakers stop doing what should the placemakers start doing i think placemakers as i mentioned before it's it's usually working in a very for a good reason is hyper local mm. places and i think placemaking also provides this opportunity to respond to larger societal challenges or be a tool to achieve missions and uh, like climate neutrality address uh, the climate crisis and all kind of underlying new climate realities we are going to face uh, by 2050. And I think placemakers should, should be very aware or should be increasingly aware of the power of this mm. placemaking tools to achieve that. Mm. So while often we discuss in a very local setting for extremely good reasons, the links to larger ambitions, um, I think should be highlighted more yeah. and should be, should be addressed more or Understood more also mm. by the place. But how, Johannes, how do we raise awareness about this? Um, having discussions, I would say. We mm. could just, uh, we saw it here already at the placemaking where you get at some sessions which really linked, build up this link between the local and the global, if yeah. you will. But I think we need more, more of that. Um, mm. Having discussion, what that mean, what does that mean? Having people on board, uh, to, to see how, um, how, how do you do that in a city? How, yeah. um, how, are placemaking tools used strategically to achieve missions? Mm -hmm. And I think it, we need more of that. Yeah, is it possible that uh, this could be part of your like your program? Is that to raise awareness as well? Um, absolutely, I would say so. Yes, like so, how we did today uh, yeah. or yesterday as a session, but like yeah. have it a, a, pro, a program during these years. I think we we try to do that anyway with how the way how we fund projects and what we demand from the projects okay. um but i think we need yeah it's building this kind of mm. networks for this discussion and exchanges i think this ex or these exchanges of experiences and approaches is extremely important yeah. uh, what, what do you what do you demand slash require from a project well they need to have a project there's very formal yeah, uh, yeah, formal yeah. Uh, requirements which um, I think are very boring, and I will not go into that. But what, give what me I, like some highlights. What we what we do require is that they have um, what we do strongly support. Let's put it that way: is mm. co-creative and experimental approaches in the projects, um, setting up urban living labs, uh, bringing different uh, urban actors, stakeholders together yeah. to really not only go into participation, mm. but really take the next step to co-create. Yeah. Um, do you require also like this kind of um, communication or presentations? Yeah, there's like part of uh, like documenting the journey, um, or no, only the final uh, presentation. No, no. We we are also usually following the process of the of the project yeah. because it is important for us mm -hmm. to understand what is in terms of content, not to check up on if they're doing the work for the funding yeah, they're yeah, applying yeah. to. Just like as a coaching or mentoring yeah, to, or help. To, yeah, to, to get the knowledge which mm. is produced along the way, the yeah. experiences, to yeah. use that, to bring that to other events, to bring that to other um, other discussions, to build a mm. larger network yeah. or to... I'm, I'm curious, is there like a specific countries that always like you receive so many application from? Um, well, that the structure of this this fund is a bit is a bit um, special, if you will, because there's not one pot of money. There is okay. There's 27 pots because it's 27 countries, mm. and each um, 
each organization from a certain country receives funding from their uh, national funding agency okay. or ministry. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the budgets are different from country to yeah. country, so it is it is a bit of a of a different. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting, and I'm happy that we we have the chance to, to have this conversation, and I would love that we follow up with more stories from uh, from you. I would love that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, before you go back home, I would love to ask you the last questions. Uh, we are in, in Pontevedra, and uh, what is your message to people working on city development? What should they think about? I think uh, my three key messages would be to make regenerative principles part of your work and the planetary boundaries, to be flexible and to allow to fail and to learn for, from these failures. And also keep an eye open for opportunities in our program, in driving urban transitions to receive funding or to join our communities. Interesting. And uh, Johannes, the last question on this episode is going to be you asking it to us. So now it's your turn to ask, what is your question to me and to our listeners? I would be very interested to understand how traditional ecologic wisdom or indigenous knowledge about uh, nature and about uh, ecological processes can be part of placemaking. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Uh, we keep in touch. Absolutely. Thank you so much for this.